In this episode, you'll learn about the planet Concilium, the political capital of humankind. We'll discuss the Cerberus Crisis and learn the narrative of ITS Season 13, Frozen Roads. Concilium is Latin for Council or Assembly. The planet Concilium Prima is the ultimate council, the high adjudicator of all legal matters. Here is the seat of O12, the interplanetary organization with total jurisdiction over the human sphere. Here is the well, the deep core of Aleph. Concilium is Mount Olympus. Here is the home of the powers that shape our world. Now there is another power on Concilium. Far to the south, the combined army has opened a third beachhead in its war. The evolved intelligence has maneuvered for years to strike at the beating heart of humankind. The blow is struck. The die is cast. There is a combined army of several alien races, all of which follow the commands of the evolved intelligence. It is an ancient, ruthless entity. All forms of intelligent life face the same choice. Join or die. Humans chose neither. We have elected to fight. The combined army hit like a hammer against an anvil. Unyielding, unrelenting, every blow forged new alliances and new conflicts. From their initial beachhead on Paradiso, the combined army has extended its reach across the human sphere. The Onyx Contact Force on Dawn. The asteroid of Novi Bangkok on Human Edge. Infiltrator on Zvalarema. The Grind on Paradiso. As these conflicts were contained, the powers that be grew complacent. In a moment of our weakness, the combined army used a quantum uplink to open an artificial wormhole inside the Concilium system. It would later be named Cerberus, after the guardian of the gates of the underworld. A fleet of combined army ships emerged from this wormhole, damaging the Concilium Nova orbital ring before landing on the southern continent of Helheim en masse. Concilium is a quiet planet by the standards of the human sphere. Its population is small, about 100 million souls, most of whom reside in dense urban areas known as living cities. When the world was first discovered, it was suitable for habitation, but not comfortable. Biodiversity was low and not suitable for easy settlement. For example, Concilium possesses gigantic tree-like organisms known as Crassus truncus that spread a bright green canopy over their tropical regions. However, they are both short and incredibly girthy, 8 meters or 25 feet wide, and often hollow, supporting ecosystems rather than offering raw resources. The majority of species are arthropods, insects and crustaceans that range from cat size to the size of a pinhead. The sea and stars glitter at night on Concilium. Deep blue oceans swirl with bioluminescent life. The skies shine with trillions of nanomachines that scrub pollution and space junk. These sky shimmers clean the atmosphere when volcanic eruptions occur in the southern region of Chula. What might have created an ice age is instead a seasonal winter. All of this was made possible by taxes and cooperation. As part of their annual payments to O12, every nation and organization contributed to the terraforming of Concilium. Yu Jing's industry, backed by Aleph's coordination, and Hakislamite planetologists all carried out the bulk of the planetary adaptation. Pan-Oceania planned and built Concilium Prima's infrastructure. Nomads contributed to Concilium Nova, the myriad orbitals set in two great rings that circle the planet. Every nation left its own idiosyncrasies. The world is an integrated pastiche of all human cultures. It appears in the planet's geography, with unique climates, plant and animal life both local and imported. It courses through the veins of every building. The world's living cities bring local flavor over homogeneity. The people that live on Concilium do so in luxury. The population centers are emerging of the natural and the constructed. Cities blend seamlessly with the natural landscape. Noisy infrastructure is cleverly concealed or buried beneath the copious green space. Transportation is via mass transit. Low-flying passenger lines, ferries, and high-speed rail the generous Demigrant ensures every resident has plentiful food, safe housing, and all the expected amenities. Material exports come from the mining industry on Minas Gerais, which is largely automated and tightly regulated by the numerous agencies that keep their headquarters on the planet. O12's heart is the Oberhaus. Its sprawling and austere buildings dominate the center of Eta. Filled with meeting rooms, conference chambers, offices, and the Senate itself, 
The buildings and grounds are an effigy to the pillars of O12. The O12 Senate is the ultimate legislative authority. Decisions apply universally to every person in the human sphere. International laws, treaties, and agreements between national and corporate interests are all debated on the floor and signed off or voted down. If Earth is the spiritual core of humanity, Concilium Prima is its political heart. And that is why the combined army has chosen to invade it. The poles of Concilium are unremarkable. Deserts of ice, dust, sand, and mountains cover the polar regions. There are few settlements. Far to the north, there's the city of Berglamir. And to the south, there's the city of Thok. Both of these locations are uninteresting, save for a few stations dedicated to mining, research, or special forces training. Boredom was common among the few inhabitants. Long days in the mines of the labs were made more bearable by the long days on Maya, but this was no substitute for physical thrills. A few prospectors at Kutka Station shared a passion for racing with the scientists from the neighboring Zonget base. The most exciting thing to happen in years were races between the Nunataks. All-terrain systems of modern motorcycles blew up clouds of snow and dirt in front of them, making them suitable even for the rugged terrain of Helheim. They founded the annual Trans-Siberian Race as a friendly competition named for the ancient region of Earth where their respective base titles originated. It wasn't long before other bases in the southwest joined in the fun. Professional teams from other parts of Concilium, and even a few from off-world, would come every year to participate. That is, until this year. The planetary magnetic field made the southern region of Helheim the chosen landing site. The battle was fought in space first. Concilium fleets caused severe damage to the attack ships of the combined army, but they were unable to prevent numerous troop carriers from landing. Extreme weather and a lack of infrastructure meant that the local troops, the Concilium Planetary Defense Force, was unable to meet them before they could organize. Bureau Aegis's Sword IV was deployed, but they were a small and elite army. Research stations were evacuated. The combined army was slowed by fighting and weather. Lines were drawn. The best hope of the mixed units was to defend in a war of maneuver. The CPCD would use a strategy of defense in depth. The goal was to use small, mutually supported defensive positions rather than a single wall. However, the combined army was highly mechanized and overran many CPCD forces before they could effectively react. This incursion also had air superiority. The combined army eschewed air to ground attacks, but instead denied use of the skies to the conciliar troops, allowing their invasion force to seize huge swaths of territory. The combined army took the mining settlements of Glitnir and Eliandir. Fierce urban resistance allowed the civilian population to escape. The only notable success during this first phase of invasion was the media around Hammerensfeld, or Hammerfall. The nearby Trudheim base has a suspiciously well-trained sword for garrison, and for reasons that are not clear, the EI forces refused to use artillery for fear of damaging the crater. It looked like the settlement of Bredavlik was going to fall like Glitnir, but the timely arrival of Panoceanian and Yujingyu reinforcements prevented the combined army from claiming anything more than the eastern suburbs. Forces from across the human sphere converged on Spandau Beta, the city which was to be the headquarters of Concilium Coordinated Command. Spandau Beta was removed from the fighting on Helheim, a warm resort town on the beaches of the Njord Ocean. But the plan was thrown into disarray. Shasvasti agents detonated a dirty bomb inside the city killing and infecting much of the population. Spandau Beta is now contaminated, quarantined, walled off, and every person inside has the potential to be a Shasvasti agent. It is a constant game of cat and mouse between rescue teams, hunter units, and Shasvasti infiltrators. The new headquarters for this theater of operations is Thok, the only city of note in Helheim. Thok, named for another Jotun, houses the training and instruction academy for Section Spatha, the tactical branch of Bureau Aegis. From Thok, the Combined Command deploys incursions and plots a strategy to retake Helheim and secure the system. Above Helheim is a shattered section of Concilium Nova. Concilium is encircled by two glittering rings of stations, Nova 1, which traverses its equator, and Nova 2 around its meridian. This titanic infrastructure project made the planet Concilium Prima the most advanced world in human space, with hundreds of thousands living on the Nova rings. 
They are not solid rings, but instead a series of stations connected via maglev trains and cables. Directly above Helheim was Zanahari Station. Now it is a lethal debris field, filled with the remains of spacecraft and soldiers. For many, the war still seems far away. People on Concilium go about their business mostly uninterrupted. They enjoy short work days and long lives. War is just an item in their newsfeed. But the invasion is real. Conflict continues across the Concilium system, and especially Helheim. There is the blockader on Cerberus, debris fields in the sky, Hammerensfeld, the artillery platform around Cert. Unable to gain more territory, the combined army is attempting a pincer move to finally encircle Breidavlik, which would also threaten the Bay Ulgan Air and Transorbital Control Station. These developments have put Kutka Station and Zonget Base in the crosshairs of the combined army. Teams of armed prospectors have begun patrolling the surrounding areas, fearing an imminent attack. However, the forces of the Concilium Coordinated Command, alerted to the movements of the alien troops, have been able to deploy units to reinforce that section of the front. The endless plains sprinkled with nun attacks make it ideal for motorized warfare. This provides a tactical advantage over the combined army forces, which, for now, have nothing comparable to the motorcycles in the Concilium Theater of Operations, although some speculo agents disguised as mercenary troops and riding bikes have been spotted reconnoitering the area. Volunteers from Kutka Station and Zonget Base have joined forces as guides and motorized scouts. Across the human sphere, volunteers and mercenaries see this trend as a new opportunity. Military forces are always eager to use expendable assets rather than risking highly trained troops on dangerous scouting missions. This year, war will not put a stop to the Trans-Siberian race. It will only make it a bit more exciting than usual.